Let's discuss polytheism in Christianity. Muslims are taught that Christians are polytheists in spite of the scriptural evidence to the contrary in the New Testament. In Mark we read, The Lord our God is one Lord, for there is one God and there is none other but He. That could come straight out of the Quran, but it doesn't. Let's set aside terms like Trinity, Triune, and three persons that are products of doctrine and touch on manifestations of God found in the King James Bible. Even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and generations but now is made manifest to his saints. God is. His name is I Am, as we learn in Exodus. How could we even know there is a God if he had not manifest or revealed himself to us. In 1 Corinthians, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The Old Testament, we find the Spirit of God manifest. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. In the New Testament, we find the Spirit manifestation expressed as the Spirit of God, the Comforter, and the Holy Ghost. John, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Each regenerate person's body is a temple of God's Spirit. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Think of it as God's Spirit in us, teaching and guiding us. Muslims believe that by the word of Allah, He sent His Spirit through Gabriel to the Virgin Mary from which she conceived Jesus. They call Jesus Rola, which means from Allah's Spirit. Muslims claim Christians are polytheists for recognizing the manifestation of God's Spirit. By the same measure that they apply to Christians then, Muslims are polytheists believing in two gods. God and His Spirit. Muslims understand that Jesus is a manifestation of God, that the Virgin Mary's conception of Him was miraculous and unlike any other prophet or apostle. Then amazingly they deny that Jesus was begat by God. Consider the term begat, to father, sire, to cause to exist or occur. If God didn't beget Jesus, then who caused Jesus to exist? Muslims believe that the Virgin Mary became pregnant by God, having sent His Spirit to Mary. It's obvious from the term that if Mary became pregnant by God, then God begat Jesus. They believe that Jesus was Mary's son. Who then would His Father be? Nobody would suggest that God had carnal, fleshly relations with Mary in the human sense, yet oddly that's what Muslims are taught that Christians believe. Nonetheless, Mary did bear God's only begotten Son. Though a close imitation, Muslims are stuck illogically denying the obvious application of the term begotten because of their book, always the opposite. Allah, Allah, he begetteth not, nor is he begotten. This is directly contrary to a substantial volume of Bible verses that apply the term begotten to Jesus Christ. Muslims believe that Jesus is from God's Spirit made flesh through the Virgin Mary. So they believe in God, and in God's Spirit, and in God's Spirit made flesh in Jesus Christ. Is this polytheism? Christians believe in God, and God's Spirit, and God manifest in the flesh in Jesus Christ. In 1 Timothy, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of the angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Jews understand God manifest in His Son through the Old Testament prophets. In Isaiah, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on His shoulder, and His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That Son is God, the Mighty God, the Son. Psalms, I will declare the decree, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Fulfilled in Acts, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, 
as it is also written in the second psalm. In God's own words, the account from Matthew, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Mark, thou art my beloved Son. Luke, thou art my beloved Son. Did Peter hear it? This is my beloved Son. Islam would seem a close counterfeit so far, but here is a point of extreme departure. In Surah 930 we read, The Jews call Uzzah Son of God, and the Christians call Christ the Son of God. God's curse be on them, how they are deluded away from the truth. The one of Islam curses the Christians and Jews. The specific term Son of God occurs 47 times in the King James Bible. That doesn't even count the large volume of verses that refer to Jesus simply as the Son, as in the preceding and following verses. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. There is no shortage of those in the church that expect the Antichrist to be a close counterfeit, but are blind to the reality through unsound eschatology. Above we learn that Islam is Antichrist. Shirk, anti-polytheism, manifest in declaration that God has no Son is the most important fundamental in Islam. Muslims are antichrists. Muslims or any other Gentiles must choose between the 1600 year record of the revelation of God to mankind expressed in his word through the prophets and masses of witnesses or the 23 year record of the recitations of a single illiterate 7th century individual's unwitnessed revelations and his standalone religion that directly opposes God's word and replaced God's love and peace of the new covenant with pillage, plunder, and bloody conquest. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Surah 8.12, I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers, smite ye above their necks, and smite all their fingertips off them. The Islamic first jihad was a bloody conquest of nearly the whole known world. We see the same being repeated today in the Islamic second jihad with over 12,000 deadly Islamic terror attacks around the world just since 9-11. Visit the religionofpeace.com for details on the latest attacks. From the Voice of the Martyrs in Indonesia, three teenage girls were beheaded on their way to Christian school. The note left behind read, We will murder 100 more Christian teenagers and their heads will be presented as presents. The surviving girl of the four bears a huge scar from their attempt to behead her. In Luke we read, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. So all the Islamic sophism and wordsmithing actually moves one further away from the kingdom of God. But those without the Spirit cannot be expected to fully understand anyways. In 1 Corinthians, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. In the above we found that God is. He manifests himself in his spirit. He manifests himself in the flesh of his son. Did he manifest himself in his word? In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He manifests his word in Jesus Christ. Did he manifest himself when he directly spoke to Abraham? Or the apostles above declaring, being well pleased about his son Jesus? Did he manifest himself in a burning bush? Are we then left with God and the ways he chose to manifest himself to mankind? Three of what? Might this view help a Muslim or do you better understand just what we Christians do believe? Please visit IsraelAndBibleProphecy.com for the text version of the above with links. And for a Muslim could become brethren, please visit IslamAndTheTruth.com for an introduction to the Gospels. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. May God lead you in all truth. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life.